650 miles. That's how a local man spent the last 20 days raising money for a nonprofit called Pay It Forward, which offers sober living assistance. So here to talk about that, Kenneth Anderlich, uh, who did the running, um, along with the CEO of Pay It Forward, Hamilton Burton. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. Um, let's start with you. Okay. The obvious question is, why on earth would you do something like this? I uh, just wanted to continue to spread awareness for Pay It Forward, uh, who continues to give back into our community um, and help out those who are struggling with addiction um, with safe, sober living environment. The, the organization, um, who do you target? How do you help folks? Uh, what's the role that you guys play in, in getting people um, back on track? So, so for people experiencing homelessness uh, due to substance use disorder, if they can find treatment, they probably don't want to go back to the environment in which they came. So we answer that question. Where are you going to go? Where is a safe, supportive place for you to live? And we'll provide that answer for them. You've done this before. You've run other ultra marathons. What made you choose this particular organization? This organization has helped me out seven years ago. Um, and I continue to believe that they will thrive in the future so I mean what better way to do it than to you know run do what I do best this is you obviously I I, I did the math we're, we're looking at what over about 40 miles a day yes sir how long and, and I, I say that you know tongue-in-cheek and yet I'm asking honestly like I, I don't know if anybody can walk for you obviously people can you just did it but I mean how long, what, what's the what's the pushing what's pushing you to do something like that um, I believe that the pushing is the continuous support from our community and what they're on the same level as me is what I believe is that this is something that needs to continue to, to happen in our city. And so with them showing uh, that support of donations and, and of course and chiming in and saying good luck and all the videos that were sent to me, um, it continued to help me out. Hamilton, what kind of uh, exposure did, uh, did Ken offer you and your organization? Well, it took us to places we couldn't have ever possibly gone without his help, right? Uh, we'd like to take our programs and expand them out to the areas in which he made an impact. Um, so now we're starting to develop some of those relationships and try to expand our life-saving answers and programs in those areas. When you sit back and you look and you, you look at the journey that you've been on, um, is there one thing that stands out uh, that you're most proud of? Definitely the support, f seeing how how much was contributed to to this to this nonprofit, which was well over fifty thousand, which is wet, well over my goal on um, help um, you know giving back to something like this. And I mean, if you think about it, uh, it takes about three to four hundred dollars to help out um, a client to get housed. And so if you divide that, I think that's what between one hundred to one hundred fifty clients or potential clients, 100, 150 beds that will be available ready for, for those individuals. I'm going to get some information from you guys before we get out of here on, you know, how people can continue to help. Obviously, your journey is and the run is done, but the journey to help others uh, obviously continues and will continue now going forward. But I just want to get some particulars here. Did you do it alone? Did you run alone? No, I've had plenty of help from others, but uh, one of the things I had was my crew, uh, Roel Gonzalez and Steve Carter. They, they definitely were there um, night and day the whole 20 days. Uh, they had to be in there in the RV smelling my dirty socks and <laughs> taking care of me, but for, this, for the most part, that's them right there. Um, and just making sure that I was as comfortable as possible to get to the next destination. And where was the journey? Take us around the track. Uh, from El Paso all the way to Logansport, Louisiana. And the train knows this way towards me. There. You day go. in and day out, Brenda Santos's dedication to her work Turn this way. is more than a job. Everything that comes through here has my family name on it. She is the owner of Menson Studios in San Antonio. From photography to graphic design, a lifelong dream. There are a lot of people that are going to tell you you can't. If one door closes, another one will open. Now, over a decade in the business, I'm very grateful to my family, to my mom, my dad, my husband, who helped support me. Santos reflects on her journey. I am so fortunate to have a very strong role model in my mother. She's shown me that perseverance, hard work is what's really going to get the job done. It's hard work and passion. Never stop learning. The mother of two girls says 
this is what keeps her moving forward. I want to be an example for my children, my daughters, and tell them that you can run a business, you can be successful. Two years ago, the unexpected. Like many other businesses, Menson Studios was hit by the pandemic and the uncertainty of the months ahead. We lost about 95% of our business, and it was just pure fear. The calls started coming in. I remember crying because every time the phone rang, um, it was another customer or client canceling their contract. Despite the unknown, she found support and a new direction. That's when I actually um, came across uh, Meta. The business owner discovered a group online. It helped connect her with resources and grant applications. You can shift from being a retail space, but also online to where we could reach customers. She was later asked by the platform to become part of its leaders network. First, I didn't believe that it was real. Menson Studios also recently made Meta's holiday gift guide list, which features 50 small businesses across the country. It was exciting because it was a recognition because very few are selected that I was doing something right. Santos now hopes her story inspires other women and small business owners. You actually are stronger than what you think. To never give up. Keep pushing. Tomorrow is another day. You just have to set your mind to it. You can do it. Show you uh, these food banks, really these trucks in action. You can see the food bank trucks here. They've already, uh, the folks here have already unloaded several pallets here. Today's event is the first of three that would be held. The first one here at the AT&T Center and the target really by the food bank is to feed as many as 5,000 people at each of these events, those who need it most, folks who have already pre-registered, you can still register at the food bank website. Basically, it's a mega distribution here at the San Antonio uh, AT&T Center. For families who signed up through the food bank, they're going to be able to pick up food later on this morning at 9 o'clock this morning. Uh, they've already lined up to be able to get their food. Tomorrow, there's going to be a second mega food distribution over at Gustafson Stadium off Loop 410. There's several thousand families that will be able to pick up their food in the morning. And both of these events are sponsored by local philanthropist Harvey Nasium. He does so much for this community and gives so much to the folks of San Antonio and Bear County. And finally, on Friday, there's going to be several home deliveries with home food boxes with our holiday box with Fox event that we uh, do for our community. About 100,000 food boxes are expected to be sent out to families in our area. Again, for the rest of the week, three big food events with the San Antonio Food Banks. This comes one day after every senior center in our area got deliveries with those big food trucks. There's one for every city council district. They go out and they give food to every senior center and they make sure that every senior has food and every family has food on their table just in time for the holidays.